Hi, my name is Bastian and I'm one of the founders of OpenSnip.org and in this video we'd like to briefly introduce you to the idea that is behind OpenSnip, why and how we founded it and also give you some insights in how you could use OpenSnip for your own research, how you can participate in the research that could be done with OpenSnip, uh, so stuff like how to upload your genotyping results, how you could upload your phenotypic information and how you can create new phenotypes if you're interested in stuff that's not already been asked in OpenSnip. And we also briefly cover the stuff like how can you use OpenSnip to get the data out of OpenSnip, which kind of uh, interfaces are there to get data out, stuff like this. We started working on OpenSnip about eight or nine months ago, I think, and Basically, after I was genotyped by 23andMe myself, and I just rushed off and published my data on GitHub and left a note there, if you need any phenotypic information about me to use this in your science or in your research or in your studies, just uh, write me an email and I'll, of course, answer any questions you have if you need this about me. And being a biologist by training, I also wanted to find other data sets of other people to do some small-scale studies or just to play around with the data myself. But I found it really, really hard to find any information of other people. There are people who already have uploaded their data to GitHub just as I did. There are people who host their genotyping information on Google. There are people who host their genotyping information on their personal web pages. And it's not that easy to find all this information and most information doesn't have any phenotypic information as well. The guys at Snipedia try to do, collect this data in a large spreadsheet where you get a list of all the people who have uploaded their data. And, well, this works reasonably well, of course, but you have no notification system, so you don't know if there are new data sets and you regularly have to check back to find the new data sets. And many of the links, unfortunately, are already broken, so they were once available, but they are not any longer. So, Philip and I thought, maybe we could do just a small-scale repository where people can upload their genotyping results and people who want to get notifications if new datasets are available. And so we started working on OpenSnip and we thought, well, you know, having all the genotyping results is nice and it's fun, but from a scientific point of view, they are basically worthless if you don't have any phenotypic information about hair color, eye color, or diseases you are interested in and stuff like this. So just genotyping results won't get you very far in terms of science. So what we did was we thought, okay, let's add uh, support for people who can then annotate their genotypes or enter information about their personal traits so people can share their information about their hair color, the diseases, diseases they have, the well, their blood pressure, their blood type, stuff like this. And we also thought, well, this is interesting if we ask questions, but other people may be much more, much smarter than we are, or they may have much better ideas. So we made it open and said, if you sign up for OpenSnip, you can create new phenotypes on the spot, so you can just enter your information you're interested in. So let's say you're interested about if people are rising early or rising late, if they don't have to get up for work anyway. So I didn't think of this, and people have thought about this, and they can just enter the phenotype, and all users who have already signed up for OpenSnip will get asked this question. So it's a bit like the FormSpring approach, just for, well, more medical relevant or more interesting data than just asking questions about personal life, which may not have any medical implications attached. So we did this and then we thought, this is nice, but something is still missing. And what are the benefits for people who upload their data and upload their phenotypic information to OpenSNP? And thought, well, of course, you just help science to, in some way because people or scientists or citizen scientists can use this data for their own studies and play around with the data, but maybe there should be something in for users as well. And uh, we thought, wouldn't it be great if people could get access to primary literature, so to papers which have been published in some peer-reviewed journals about associations with those SNPs, so if you're interested in 
uh, the latest research on your SNPs, you could read it up. And so what we did is we implemented the SNPedia results, which are already humanly curated. So you have a summary of what literature has been published on this SNP. Then we also collect data from uh, the Public Library of Science. It's a great open access publisher and they have many journals and they have already many, many different publications on the SNPs which are tested by companies like 23andMe, DecodeMe and stuff like this. So we basically mined those databases already and then we also implemented the Mendeley database. I think you have all known or heard of Mendeley. So it's uh, like last of M for scientific literature and people collaborate there, share their papers they've read, annotate them, stuff like this. So again, this is a huge corpus of papers which have been published in peer-reviewed journals. And you can use this as well to mine for the re most recent literature on the SNPs which are tested by 23andMe and stuff like this. So we take those three databases, Snipedia, Mendeley and the PLOS databases and collect all publications and all information we can find on the SNPs which are tested by direct to consumer and genetic testing companies. And we use it and create a nice small package out of it and if you're interested in SNP1234 you can go to opensnip.org and visit the page of this specific SNP and you find all the publications which are done on this. You can also see how many other people share your genotype and of course there's a bit of a social feature you can comment on those snips and can say well the, the literature says you should have blue eye color if you have those snips but I have this variation and my eye color isn't blue so it's not 100% the risk or stuff like this. People are using this in this kind of way. So yeah this is the basic idea of OpenSNP. So, uploading genotyping information, uploading phenotype information and for users you have the great benefit that you can well find the latest literature and find others with similar SNPs and talk to them about your variations or what they found out so far. OpenSNP basically consists out of four guys who are interested in personalized medicine and in coding applications, are interested in personal genomics and stuff like this. So Philip and I came up with the idea and started working on it. And then we were joined by Fabian and Helge who did us or did help us a lot with testing the application, fixing bugs, writing new functions, helping with the design of the web application and stuff like this. So it's really a hobby project we are doing all of OpenSNP besides our regular jobs and besides our regular studies as we are all still studying in some kind of way. And yeah, so OpenSNP is completely open source. You can download it at GitHub. You can, well, if you have any bug fixes or have written some new functions, pull requests are much appreciated because we really would like to do more work on OpenSNP but as we do this besides our day jobs, it's, we don't have that much time. So everybody who wants to participate in OpenSNP in an active way and would like to suggest new features or stuff like this, please do so. We are really, really, really fond of everyone who finds bugs, supposed solutions, stuff like this. So yeah, please do it. Our approach to collect phenotypic information along with the genotypic information is partially inspired by 23andMe because they don't only offer those genotypings to their paying customers but customers can only also opt in to perform or be part in their studies as well. 23andMe has some surveys on their website about different diseases or your response to different drugs and stuff like this and if you participate in their research you will have to participate those or take those surveys and after you've taken them they can perform those genome-wide association studies on their data sets. And 23andMe already published some uh, papers on this so they could replicate older findings with already known associations but they also found some novel associations which haven't been found yet for example on Parkinson's disease. And their approach shows that it's possible to do this using self-reported data. So it's crowdsourced, people participate their own research, or their own genotypes and phenotypes, so 
you have no real possibility to check if those phenotypes are how accurate they are entered basically but they've shown they can replicate older findings and find new ones so this works those crowdsourced approach and which is really impressive is the large sample sizes they have for their Parkinson's research they have about 30,000 customers who have taken part in those study and if you compare this to the normal academia studies on genome-wide association studies they usually have about 500 to 5,000 participants so this is a magnitude larger and this is really nice because the larger your sample size the better you can resolve those associations but for some obvious reasons like privacy issues or liability 23andMe won't give anybody access to their data so this is maybe the one reason we started to work on OpenSNP because we wanted to ha have everybody the option to participate in this and to use the data for their own Well, if you publish your genotyping results on the web and even under a public domain license, as, as we do it but as open, with OpenSNP, so if you upload the data, it's uh, Creative Commons Zero, which allows everybody to use it for whatever he likes. And he doesn't give you a name and stuff like this, so it's really, really completely open. Then, of course, people can use those kind of information, especially if you pair it with medical data or with uh, phenotypic annotations for stuff which you might not like. For example, or the prime example for this is always the uh, health insurance company. So your insurance company might not insure you any longer if they know you have higher risks or at least they will raise your rates so you will have to pay more for your insurance because of your genetic predispositions. Then another example are law enforcement agencies which might use public available data to, well, find out if you are the one who committed the crime. But of course also as genetic information is inherited by your next of kin, they can even find out if somebody closely related to you committed this crime or not. Then, the, yeah, as already said, this also, if you publish your genotyping results, you will at least partially provide information about your relatives, especially your own children and your parents, of course. So you should keep in mind all this stuff before you upload your data, because once it's on there, you can delete your data from OpenSNP, but you have no... well, you don't know if somebody already downloaded the data and used it for something or if there's some mirror somewhere else where we don't have control over it so once you publish your data on OpenSNP or other platforms on the web you lose control over your genetic information in a way that you don't know what other people will do with it so think about this before uploading it and if you don't feel comfortable about it then you shouldn't do it well, we don't want to talk you into uploading your data and say everything is fine because we can well we can't make sure that everything will be fine. There are some laws in different countries. The USA have their Genetic Information Non Discrimination Act, which tries to minimize the impact of publicly available or of those genetic information. Here in Germany we have the Gene Diagnostic Gesetz it's called, which tries to do the same thing, but in the end you really don't know what people are doing with the data and if you feel uncomfortable with sharing your genetic information in any way then please don't do it. So keep this in mind before participating in OpenSNP in an active fashion by sharing your data.